bus downtown. It feels like it's easier, even though it's probably not any easier. It's probably more difficult. Um, there was some bus drama. That stupid app never works right. So I waited at the other bus stop for a while. No bus came. Moved up here. Hopefully there's a bus coming in about seven minutes. Let's see. The Tower Theater and it's an Apple store now and this is Broadway downtown when I first got here these stores were, these theaters were all vacant and over the last few years they've turned them into things we're going over there Orpheum Theater there's no line outside thank God I'm guessing the opener is on and um, there's usually a taco truck in the corner that I might go to. My stomach's been acting up a little bit today. The food inside the venue, I don't think it's very good. I don't remember. I feel like they have tea. I'm not positive. I'm very, very tired. It's kind of like the old days. I might take a nap on the couch downstairs. Set an alarm on the phone for 8.58. There it is. Pavement. That's the uh, exterior they used for that... Um, Eddie Murphy movie, My Name is Dolomite, for the movie premiere, is here. Come on, we got a light. They just want to run right over you, they don't give a shit. take some selfies on the other side of the marquee and then we'll go in there's the pavement look at that that's the poster see, like that's the poster you want not the one that they sell all right let me get some pictures so basically Curtain's not till 10.15 tonight, which sucks. And it's not the band's fault by any means, but when you're charging this kind of money to have a 10.15 curtain is fucking bullshit. So I have like <laughs> over an hour to kill. Peter Hook is playing right there. And there's nobody on the street selling tickets or I'd grab like a $20 ticket and go see Peter Hook for an hour. Um, so basically, I guess I'm just going to go in, get a beverage, and go plop on a sofa downstairs. And there is this evening's merchandise line all the way into the Orpheum Club, which is just the bar, one of several. House is completely empty. It's about 8.15, I think, maybe 8.30. If 
you've watched a vlog from here before, then you know I usually have this whole room to myself. Or sometimes it's me and A to G, we have it out to ourselves, but it's full. I got the last couch. Lobby's getting busy. Going home on the bus after midnight is gonna be fucking horrible. I'm very upset about it, but whatever, I live. Other than that, uh, it's gonna be great.
concert has not started yet. It's 8.51 p.m. I can already tell you, without a doubt in my mind, what the Spin Magazine concert review title would be. It would be, Pavement Brings the Crooked Rain to L.A. Show. That's what the title would be. Um, I sort of slept today. I don't really remember. Let me think what happened today. I slept, and then I had to do some work on a deadline, and then I had my needle phobia therapy, but only for a half hour, and I was quite surprised that it didn't freak me out as bad as it should have, considering how stressed I am. And also... This morning, my Crohn's disease was, like, out of control. Uh, I think from all the stress of the last few days, I can't remember the last time that I had really gotten sick like that. It's been a while. So, um, that was disconcerting, but it, it seemed to be okay. And I had the needle phobia therapy, picked up Jen at the train station, we went to Philippe's, I'm sorry, there's no video of that. The Philippe's was great, as always. I forgot it was Friday, and then when I got there and I realized it was Friday, I was so excited because it means we can have um, Manhattan clam chowder. It's the only day of the week, and Manhattan clam chowder is really hard to get in L.A. Sometimes Air One has it, and it's really good at Air One, but of course it's a billion dollars at Air One. So that was real nice, a, a very nice surprise, but a unpleasant surprise was that a slice of pie at Philippe's is now $8 for one slice. And if you've ever had pie at Philippe's, you know it's not anything special. Um, it's just a comforting thing. So I let that go. Um, dropped Jen off at her hotel. I really need probiotics, like now, because Amazon couldn't deliver till Monday, but by the time they deliver, I'll be on the plane. And I don't really have time to go anywhere. So I was hoping to find a CVS or something when I picked Jen up. But the only one was one of those ones with one of those weird fucking L.A. parking garages where it's like on the wrong side of the building and it's one narrow thing and there's 18 spots and you can't turn and the door is out the back and all that, you know, all that shit. And then being at CVS, the probiotics would be way too expensive. And it just like it was too much time that I just didn't have because I just wanted to get home and get to sleep. 
being that I only got about three hours sleep the night before, maybe four hours, and I didn't know Jen needed stuff, so she's pushing me, do I want to go to CVS, and I'm like, no, I just want to drop you off and go home, and then I later found out she needed stuff, and she spent money on DoorDash, I felt bad, I would have happily taken her somewhere, but who knows. Um, then I slept, I was hoping to sleep for like two or three hours, but I only slept for about an hour and 15 something. And as I was trying to go to sleep, customers and just texts, it was busy. I talked to Paul for a minute, then I fell asleep, woke up and I had missed a whole bunch of uh, stuff. And I texted those people back and luckily it didn't screw anything up too bad. Did some more work, had like whatever little chicken was left in the fridge, just enough to um, not be starving and enough to, God forbid my Crohn's disease, act it up again, you know, that it wouldn't be a problem just to get through the show. And then it got to be about seven already and I had this homework for the uh, paralegal program. You know, I've, I, many of you have dealt with Canvas before, but that didn't exist the last time I was in school, so it's all new to me. And I was always frustrated with college classes because each a lot of college class has nothing to do with the class. It has to do with navigating the behavior of the teacher. Like each teacher has their way that they do things and blah, blah, blah. And that's what a lot of like rate my professor complaints and stuff are about. I remember I had this one, when I went to FIT, you had to take a class in Microsoft Office, which apparently I have to take again. Uh, but anyway, that teacher was all about, you have to do things this exact way and follow my steps. And he was like a computer oriented guy. And I could see that, and I was like, okay. So I just followed his steps, and everybody else in the class would rip their hair out and be frustrated and not understand the guy and constantly ask me for help. That guy's name was Robert Rubian. I don't know why I remember that. And so he would give you the instructions, and you'd have to sit there and go through these instructions, and the whole time he'd be telling stories about, like, the decline of Detroit, because his parents' house was in Detroit or Michigan somewhere and he still owned it and now it was worthless and that was most of what he talked about, the fall of Detroit. The only classmate I remember, Misty, went on to write for Women's Wear Daily. I think she's kind of a big shot at Women's Wear Daily now. Um, weird. But anyway... But that's what I really learned as an adult when I first went back to college. It was like all of college is just navigating the personalities of the teachers more than the work. The work itself really isn't that hard. Um, and as I'm seeing on this Canvas thing, that's the case. You know, Canvas, it seems like they've got a very clear structure, but most of the teachers never learn the structure. Like it's too complicated for the teachers, so they just have their way. <coughs> And so each class, you have to follow a different formula that is an extension of the teacher's personality. This shit never changes. You know, that's the thing. It's like education in general. This is why it was always so maddening to me, even as a child, and I couldn't deal with school. Because it's got, and it's, it's just like everything in my life. Like when I'm focused on the show and everybody else is focused on the socializing at the show, it, it's the same issue. You know, um, it's the same issue. It's just, uh, it's got nothing to do with the thing. So I'm learning to navigate the canvas, the things, the people. Thankfully, one thing that's really great is each of the classes, there is an assignments tab, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know this. Um, and that's like a checklist. Just do this shit. Here's when you got to do it. 
and here it's done. The only thing I wish is that, and I maybe some of the class have some don't. Mine, you can't start next week's work until a certain day. And if it was up to me, the way I do things, I just take the whole fucking class in a week. You know, I just sit down and bang it out. But they don't let you do that. I don't know why. Um, so the part that's like getting to me is constantly having to remember to log into this thing and figure out and see when it's due. And it's diff that that part is diff very difficult for me. But I'm doing it somehow. We're in week two, and I haven't failed or fucked anything up as far as I know. Um, I don't know that I've learned anything, but that seems to be fairly irrelevant. Uh, so that's good. So I did that uh, up until 8 something, 8.20, at which point I said I better go. I don't know what the set times are, and hopefully I'm not going to fuck up the video, but Jen just texted me the set times. Yeah, 10, okay. So, um... Yeah. Now I'm heading to the show. You cannot bring an umbrella in. I, ch I double check that. Not that most people would ever... How often do you need an umbrella in LA? But the parking situation over there sucks. So I guess I'll try to find a spot on the street near the theater, like within that block, in case it's really pouring. It'll cost me 20 bucks to park on the street if I do, more than likely. Um, if not, I'll go to the $8 lot. I got a hat. Hope for the best. Tomorrow night, I don't... Uh, tomorrow night, Jen gave me a parking spot, but it's also, you know, a few blocks away, so... I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Last night's show was really, really great, and I don't think I did a recap. I mean, I did a little recap on Instagram about how fucking great it was, but it was really great. I liked, I think I liked last night's show the most out of any of the reunion shows, you know, going back through 2010 and that was probably the best pavement show I've seen since 97 or 98 or whatever it was. It's really great. And I'm hoping that tonight's is as good, if not better. I think you can see from the clips, like, just how nice it's just, it's, it works, finally. Like, that's the thing that really got me in the 90s, I'd be sitting backstage with all these kind of bands and my fucking t-shirt from the night before and my cigarettes and my Lipton iced tea and my laptop that was this fucking chunky. And they, you know, music, by and large, musicians are fucking morons. And I'm not saying that about Pavement because it's one of the few bands where everybody in the band is extremely intelligent. But by and large, most musicians are morons. And, you know, they'd be sitting there going, and I'd be like, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just make merch? Why don't you just have a website? And what's a website? Nobody cares. Why don't you make a mailing list? Why don't, you know, basic fucking management 101 shit. And then they'd go play these shows in horrible venues under horrible situations. They'd lose money, or they'd barely make any money, or they'd make some money, but not nearly as much as they should have made. You know, like, and you'd just be sitting there just ripping your fucking hair out. Um, and it's nice to see a band you like that's got their shit together, that's now, now popular enough to play a bigger place, and uh, and doing everything correctly. It's just the nicest feeling to me. It really, really is. Even though there was a little bit of ticket drama, whatever, 
he just kind of shrugged because like let them get as much money as possible who cares and that's and see and that's the thing they didn't say no they're taking care of everybody just like they always did they're doing a great job and they're making a lot of money and i'm so happy for them that that's all working out they did everything right with merch which just you know of course, I'm always going to be critical, and I feel they could do a better job with the social media, but who gives a shit, you know? Um, it's not like they need to do any better at this point. They're doing just fine. And it's so nice. It's so nice to see that, and it makes me feel great, and I'm very happy for them. Unlike a lot of other 90s bands that come back and just do the dumbest shit still... You know, some of these bands come back and they do one tour and it does pretty well because they haven't played in 15 or 20 years or whatever and they make a ton of money on merch and then they think that they're going to just keep doing that like oh we're back and then the next tour doesn't do as well or they or they make so much fucking merch they can never sell and then they're stuck with it and they don't know why nobody's buying it or why they're losing money like it, it never that shit never changes and there's a lot of those um, so it's it's it feels so good to see it all done correctly you know I'd like to say that there aren't like every matador band but there's matador bands that I love that I see do certain things and I'm like what the fuck are you doing and pavement's doing everything right and, it, it, and it's it's so great. So that all feels good, and I'm very happy about all of that. And it makes me excited to go to the shows and support them. And um, it's really wonderful. It's a, right now, even though my toe is ripped open, my ass is broken. It's pouring fucking rain. I'm sleep deprived and broke and crazy and everything else. This is exactly the situation where if there's a concert, I'm like, fuck it, I don't, I'll stay home. No, this time I'm going, and I'm really, really happy about going. Because it's all correct. And it's probably one of the only, if not the only times in my adult life that, that everything about it is perfectly correct. Except the curtain time at this venue. I mean, I'll, I'm Jewish, I'll always find something to complain about, but you get what I'm saying. All right, we're getting close. I'm near the Staples Center. I'll see you guys outside or inside the venue. Let's see, depending on the rain.
By the end of this tour, she'll be doing all the time.
12.15 a.m. quesadilla. Uh, can I get a cabeza burrito, no beans? I'm pouring one. I'm right. Can you put cheese on it? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, Okay, so I'm here a little, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, leather. You always got, I mean, come on. They put in the effort. All right. Um, I'm here a little bit early. Scott's, the guy I think who produced Scott's most recent record is opening probably now in like two minutes. I went, I picked up Jen Jones for lunch. Lunch got confused, traffic, this, that. We tried to go to Mod Pizza again. Second time we tried to go to Mod Pizza and the power was out, but this was a different Mod Pizza. We ended up at Pans, which is fucking awesome, but then I went home and collapsed hard for about three hours. I'm still kind of waking up. Um, Jen gave me a parking spot back there, but it was a stacked lot and it was valet which I'm not doing that tonight. I parked over there. There was plenty of spots on the street. No problem. This is like the busiest night of this run. Um, so I'm kind of just standing out here delaying going in because it's just going to be fucking disgusting in there. Like last night was bad, but tonight's going to be even worse. The AC is broken and it's, it's very sold tonight. So let's enjoy with Marquee, as rare as they are these days, there's also a, a guy working the street. Yeah. That guy right there is working the street in a television Marquee Moon shirt. I have never seen somebody scalping tickets in a television shirt before. I love it. Alright, let's go ahead. Like, it was a This doesn't seem as crowded yet as it did last time, but we got here later last night. Merch looks about the same. I just want to show you guys the good bar is open. Eyes wide shut and shiny That's the good bar that was closed the last couple nights. It's been a pleasure to play. Uh, this will be our fourth show in Los Angeles this year.
Upstairs. They're here. Jerry and told me, she said, watch Thomas when he gets into upper management. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. I won't sing. Uh, first of all, I, I got the quesadilla to go this evening because I was kind of like inhaling it last night to get home. So I'd rather just get home. It'll still be warm. Um, we're about to pass that nightclub with the boom, boom, boom music. It's right there, but the crowd is not a big crowd tonight compared to last night. Um, Let's see. First of all, that was the first time I can remember in forever. Hang on. That was the first time I can remember in forever that I went to a show where like I knew somebody in every two feet. In, in New York, of course, that happened all the time, but here that never happened, so that was nice. That's always a good feeling. Um, you know, I keep thinking, it's like, see this right here? It's a shitty shot, but you see that? So somewhere down here is that fountain from that scene in Marathon Man that's all lit up at night, which is so fucking cool, and I would love to see it in person. And I never get around to it. We gotta find that. Um, so let's see what happened. I went in. 
And... Oh, I found Megan and Chris. They texted me where they were. And as I was going to see them, Mark was just standing in the lobby in his stage clothes with a mask on, just hanging out in the lobby. Nobody noticed. It was great. Um, and then I ran into this girl, Kelsey, who we follow each other on Instagram. Uh, that was nice. And then... Um, and then I saw Kendall and her friend Scott, who flew in from New York for the show. You know, it's so strange, like, I like all these people, I would certainly hang out with all these people, but especially as you get older, just hanging out is not a thing that makes any sense. You know, I'm so busy. Everybody's so busy. It's strange. I don't know how to explain that. But it was nice to see all the people for a change. It's just like, it, instead of seeing them in, like, hey, let's, let's talk for a half hour here. Hey, let's talk for a half hour there. It's condensed into like, let's hang out for three minutes here and see everybody all at once, like, I don't know. Anyway, so, um, that was all good. And Megan and I made plans for when she and Chris get back from their trip, which is great, because we haven't really gone anywhere since the pandemic started. We haven't done anything, so we're gonna go see a museum in a couple weeks and the show is a bad angle and I'm not looking at the camera because I have to look at where I'm going um, look at that the show is really good it started off different, as you could see in the video. Hang on. I'm sitting on my quesadilla. I've got you on top of my quesadilla right now. All right, you're off of the quesadilla. It started out a little different. It kind of seemed like it was going for um, like a jam band kind of thing for a minute, but then it wasn't. And Jen, Jen got her box seat. Which is funny because when Jeff and I were here for something, or maybe, no, maybe it was when I was here for Wanda Sykes, whenever the hell that was. When was I here for Wanda Sykes? Does anybody remember? I remember texting Jen and Rob in our little group chat and being like, we got to get the boxes because you can't buy the boxes. So Jen finally got the boxes. I didn't. And... Uh, Scott shouted out to her from the stage. I guess it's the 30th pavement show Jen has seen. Which it's not, I mean, it's great, but it's more that it's the 30th show Jen has seen since 92, which is rare because, you know, the band just wasn't that popular back then, so... She like stood up and waved, like it was at an opera house or something. It was fucking great. I loved it. Um, and I loved it too because like her boyfriend came up on the train and everything. And I think it's nice for if you're in a situation like that to to have your partner see, you know. That what you know the thing that you're into some recognition it, that's always good and I think that's wonderful and I felt very very happy for her for that um, it was fucking hot in there again 
but I enjoyed it. I almost wonder if some of the shows might be more energy if the theaters turned off the AC, but it's also super uncomfortable. In some shows, it would put everybody to sleep. We don't really think a lot about the temperature. You know, you think a lot about lighting and sound and environment, but fuck, I've, I've barely, if ever, heard a band ever talk about what temperature they like to set the theater at for the audience. Sometimes for, if it's like a real singer, sometimes they'll need something for their throat or whatever, but you never hear them talk about the audience. What street is this? Oh, what street am I on? I don't know. I think I gotta go up here and make a right somewhere. That would make sense. I think up there. You guys wanna see? Yeah, I'll show you. Anyway, so the show was good. It gets a little bit too comfortable almost when they're doing, you know, multiple nights in one theater. There's, there's a little bit too much familiarity, which can be good, but can also be bad. And it's hard to say which is which uh, in each situation. Tonight I think it was good because tonight was clearly like the VIP audience night, which is strange. Oh, we go straight. I know where we are. Um, was there something at Staples Center? Is that why there's traffic here? So it, it gave them enough time to warm up for the... I don't want to say more important crowd, but the the crowd with more visibility when they all post on social media and shit. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go home. I'm going to eat this quesadilla. I'm going to go look for actually a, a Friday parking spot right now so I can bury the car for the week. And what I need to do is I need to empty the glove box and everything. Not that there's anything of value in the car ever, but uh, for those of you who remember, my car got robbed a few months ago, and dumb shit that they took that you would think is worthless is so fucking hard to replace now. So, like, they stole my Cracker Barrel map. Why they stole that, I don't know. But Cracker Barrel map is something I think of as being free, but now Cracker Barrel doesn't print maps anymore. And it took months of eBay to get a, a you know like one of the later cracker barrel maps at a, a even remotely reasonable price. I think I paid six dollars for it at the end. But every there was a million little things out of the car that they took like that. And so I'd like to take everything out of the car and uh, open all the you know open all the co compartments so that if anybody who's stupid enough to rob the car is smart enough to look in the windows first, they will realize there's nothing to steal. I might do that tonight. I might go do that tomorrow. And then there's still some talk about potentially going to Duran Duran tomorrow night. I probably said this earlier, but I'll say it again just in case I didn't. Oh, it's all police here. There's some big to-do happening. A lot of police cars here. Um, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know what's happening here. What is this? Almost looks like they've cornered somebody or something. I don't know. Oh. Um, anyway, what I was saying was, if you're ever in a situation where you're, shit, where you're going to see the same band over and over again, you know, several nights in a row, like I'm in the middle of right now, most times, if on a day off you go see another band, that other band 
it seems like in your mind sucks. Whereas if you just went to see that other band once with nothing else happening, you'd be like, this is a great show. There are some exceptions. I remember there was a point where I was seeing Neil Young every night for a while. And on an off night, I saw The Who. And it was, I think, maybe still the best Who concert I've ever seen. So it, it comes in, but more often than not, if you're in a, a row of seeing the same band over and over again and you go see another band, you won't enjoy it. So I don't know that I want to take time and money that I don't really have. But at the same time, those of you who know how much I love Duran Duran, like I've driven to Vegas more than once to see Duran Duran because I love Duran Duran so much. Um, and this is the first time they've played in LA in the six years I've lived here. So it seems weird to not go, but I don't know that it's the best decision. We'll see how, how it plays out tomorrow. After that, um, Monday morning, I'm gonna head up to San Francisco. I'm hoping there's no issue with the plane or anything. I've got lots of travel insurance just in case. Tomorrow I have to start, I have to finish charging 360 batteries and getting all the memory cards together and got my list of stuff ready to go. I've probably said all this already. And we're going to go film, film, film. It's going to be great. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with me for the last three days. I hope you've enjoyed the vlog. Don't forget to subscribe, like, etc. See you guys. Good night.